Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for sending in your videos. I'm going to show you all the tips you need to know. We've got some great stuff. All my values are based on actual sales records. Hi, good morning, Dr. Lori. This is Candace from Jacksonville, Florida. I just wanted to show you my aura for Kraken vase. It was purchased from a thrift store for only $10. And I thought you might want to look at it. It's signed on the bottom and has a serial number. It's in good condition and it doesn't have any scratches or chips. Thank you. Hi, Candace. Candace is such a good social media follower and such a great subscriber to YouTube, as you all are. So thank you very much for subscribing. Got to ring that bell. A um, couple of things. I love your piece. You said you bought it for $10, $10, right, at the thrift store. This particular piece dates to the middle part of the 1950s, introduced in 1954 by a gentleman named Sven Palmquist. And Sven Palmquist is a relatively well-known Scandinavian designer, mid-century modern. Yours is called a Kraka vase, and the Kraka vases have that nice, form and also those elements inside sort of a uh, a cage like element inside of the cased glass it's a beautiful condition wonderful color beautiful um, attention to detail very typical of scandinavian design in the mid-century modern style it's a gorgeous piece now it's also signed it also has the original uh, label on it from or fours value on your piece this is a big thrift store fine for 10 bucks value on your piece is 775 dollars good for you candace thanks for sending in this video i'm sure you're very happy that's a nice appraisal good for you Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Carl, and I'm at my girlfriend's house, and I was doing some cleaning, and I found this vase laying on this table. It is hand-painted. It has gilt on the front outlining the uh, flowers on it. It doesn't have any gilt on the back. It is porcelain, not bright white, with no markings, and it's handled. What is it? Hey, Carl, you know, the first thing I thought when I saw you, like the, the first word wasn't even out of your mouth yet. I thought, oh, here's a guy whose girlfriend doesn't want to be on the video. <laughs> so you're there to clean out, help clean the house. That was nice of you. You know, who want, doesn't want a guy like you, Carl, right? All right, so you're cleaning, first of all. Couple of things. You're a doll, but your hands are in the way. I got to be able to see the piece, right? Here's what I was able to see when you weren't putting your hands on the piece and such. Couple things. First of all, bright white clay, exactly, is porcelain, fired at a high temperature, usually quite white. And you can see that from the bottom, right? Also, one of the things that I noticed immediately, even with your hands in the way, Carl, <laughs> was in fact the bulbous nature of the bottom of that vase and the bulbous nature that's repeated at the top. It's a very typical early 1900 style kind of bulbous at the top and bulbous at the bottom, kind of like me. <laughs> so that's what you're looking at there. The other thing that you see are those two handles which are part of the whole form. So you see that curvilinear form. Your piece is made in Japan. Your piece is probably marked Nippon or something like it. It is not a, ja it's a Japanese piece, but probably not marked Japan. That particular piece is porcelain and it is hand gilded. So they outline with the gold over that floral design. You'll notice there's a distinctive front and a distinctive back because the back does not have as much decoration at all as the front. So there's one way that you're supposed to display this piece, not, oh, that, not that you would walk around it kind of thing. Intended for a cabinet, a shelf, that kind of thing where there's a back that you wouldn't see. Your piece is quite nice, dates to the early part of the 1900s. What it is is a vase. What you are is a cool guy and value on your piece is just about $90. Thanks a lot, Carl. Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Sharon Moore from Cannell, Ohio. I bought this 15 inch blue and white Rossini vase from uh, Goodwill a year and a half ago for $4.99. It was really dirty and I knew it was Italian glass and I don't really like Italian glass per se, but I bought it because I could not believe despite how filthy it was, there were no chips or scratches anywhere. The beautiful color and the label were icing on the cake. What can you tell me about it, Dr. Lori? Hey, Sharon, thank you for sending in your video. I really liked your video. I liked that you had your script, you had everything written out. And I like that I saw you and your object. So you got a thrift, sale, a thrift so store fine. $4.99 is not a lot of money. And what you have is a circa 1960s piece. And you knew that, you know, you knew it had a bulbous bottom, right? Rounded on the bottom and a nice long elongated neck. 
and it's called cased glass and that's because you've got sort of the blue glass on the outside and the whitish colored glass on the inside. Always look for a straight line around the top for this kind of glass. When you look for cased glass, you want to make sure that there are no chips in the casing or at that rim where the two different colors meet. So look for that. The other thing that I liked about this, of course, was the find and the deal, but this particular piece dates from about the 1960s. It's a Rossini and Poli uh, piece of glass made in Italy, Italian glass, very popular. I really like Italian glass. I'm Italian, so I like it. I also like the blue color. I like that you said I look for condition, you look for quality. You didn't care if it wasn't your style. You said this isn't really what I would like, it's not my style. That's good anyway. So think about that when you're looking for things. Value on your piece, about $150 retail. And that's what people actually pay for pieces like this. Mid-century modern, really nice form. And cleaning it up, you did a good job cleaning. But be careful when you clean glass. Thanks, Sharon. Hi, I'm Jerry Griffin from Chardon, Ohio. I uh, purchased this at a flea market in the early 80s in Painesville, Ohio, and uh, found it quite amazing that the date of 1899, it could be could be uh, potentially a, an original frame. It's uh, very old um, and seems to be in original condition. But I'd like to know a little more if you could help me. Thank you. Hi, Jerry. I like to see right from the source, the back of the car, the hatchback and the antiques inside. I love to see that. So that piece you said you picked up in the 1980s. That particular piece is really quite nice. I'll tell you a little something about me. I love lilacs. Lilacs say spring to me. I grew up in New England and we had a big lilac bush and whenever I smell lilacs, I know that spring is here. So anyway, having said that, your lilac basket with the bees is very typical of an artist of French descent. He's born in America, 1855, lives to 1911. Yeah, that's how good I am, Jerry. I'm that good. That particular piece is by an artist named Paul de Longpre. And Paul de Longpre is known for these images, these still life images with a couple of insects here and there. Now, while your piece looks like a print, it is not a print, it's a watercolor. You have an original piece and it's in its original frame. That frame which dates to about 1900. If you look at the backboard, that wooden backboard, I've taught you guys about what wooden backboards means. You gotta watch my other videos so you find out what a wooden backboard means when you see one. That particular piece, of course, is a wooden backboard and that particular frame dates to about 1900. So it's period, it's of the same period as that watercolor. Watercolors that size, like yours, by Long Prey, are valued at $2,500. So keeping that in the back of your car or picking it up in the 1980s, you did very well. Thanks, Jerry, for sending in this video. Hi, Dr. Lori. This is one of our vases that we picked up at an antique thrift store in Montgomery, Texas. I think it's beautiful. I love the frog and the flower design. And I just... The person who was selling it didn't know anything about it. And as you can see, that's the bottom. I think it's really pretty. Thank you. Hi, Rebecca. You're one of the many people who send in videos about Majolica, that beautiful lead glazed ceramic that is first introduced in the Italian Renaissance in the 1490s or so. Your piece is a piece which is actually made in China. It's made in Asia, and it's made way, way after the 1490s. Your piece is made in the early years of the 1900s, or the early 20th century. Your piece is beautiful and big. That lead glaze is called Majolica. It's widely collected. I really like Majolica. I think it's beautiful. It's beautiful for the colors. It's beautiful for the forms. Yours has a great frog and some flowers on it. It's a wonderful piece of the early 1900s. This particular piece has a mark on the bottom, which is a typical Asian mark that would be incised or impressed into the bottom of the piece. And that braid around it, kind of like when you make challah bread or some kind of braided bread, basically. But that's a wonderful piece. If you picked it up at a thrift store, you did great. It's worth about $450. It's a beautiful example with applied ornament. I'm so glad you like it. I'm so glad you picked it up. It's in beautiful condition too. So an Asian piece, we usually see the English examples, the Italian examples, or the American examples, you've got an Asian one. Really, really nice. Congratulations. Hi, Dr. Lori. I got this at an estate sale five years ago in Irving, Texas. It has a repair to the handle. Um, it is advertising for Posner's New Emporium, and I believe it to be from Canada. 
it's got a maple leaf on the bottom and it's also advertising Campbell's quinine wine and I was wondering what is it used for and what is its value thank you very much hi Andrew so this is a scuttle mug that's what you have and it's an advertising collectible and it's called a piece of barber Anna or basically something has to do with the barber shop it's made in Canada. It's made from 1905 to about 1915 or so. And, and as an advertising collectible, it's advertising uh, something, basically uh, implements that you would use in the barber shop, like quinine wine, and also, of course, shaving implements like a, a razor. What it is, is it basically will, is a therm, basically it's a ceramic piece and the ceramic will keep the heat and retain the heat. And the heat is coming from hot water that goes into this particular scuttle mug and also the soap that becomes your shaving cream. The warmer the soap, the more luxurious and comfortable the shave is for the gentleman. Piece dates to just around the time when safety razors are introduced in 1910. Value on the piece in good condition, about $25. Value on your piece, which is not in good condition, about eight. Made in Canada, but thanks very much for sending in the video. Hi, Dr. Lori. My name is Joe Hartman from Hamilton, Ohio, and I found this painting in an estate sale here in the neighborhood. Don't know anything about it other than it's oil on canvas. Looks like Lanier is the artist. And on the back, the way it's framed, and there is a penciled price tag, says Sand Dunes, $200 on here, and um, could use some information. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Joe. Thanks for sending in your video. As long as you didn't pay $200 for this work of art, you're doing fine. So the value on the back that says $200 was a value at the height of the artist's actual production. Right. So Lanier is a relatively well-known Ohio artist. So you bought something that was made locally. And if you look at the back, you can see those nails that are sort of circuitously placed in. That tells me that that particular artist is, of course, not using a commercially produced stretcher. He's making his own stretchers. He's doing it himself and then painting the piece as well. It is, in fact, of course, on canvas. And the frame says 1970s all day, every day. Why? Well, this is what you look for. You want to look for that double insert of the frame. So there's one frame and then another frame. That's very typical of the 1970s. That will help you to date the piece, because the piece is also from the 1970s, the work of art itself. So there's lots of information on the YouTube channel here that I tell you about frames and how to identify valuable frames. So you really have to look into that as well. Not to mention all this information about different types of works that are framed. So make sure that you check that out. A couple of other things that I want you to think about when you're at an estate sale, of course, those pieces that are the decorative pieces are going to be the ones that typically are the ones that the estate sale people want to get sold. So remember, those decorative pieces might be the ones that you can negotiate on. Value on your piece is just about $100. And that piece is in really nice condition. I hope you enjoy it. For $10. Thought he was completely adorable. It's not a great frame, but it looked like it had been professionally done. I have not pulled the paper back to check what it looks like behind. I don't know if it's original. I don't know if it's a print. But he was so cute, I couldn't pass him up for 10 bucks. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for sending in this adorable 1960s print. And it is indeed a print. I want to talk to you a little bit about Monty Montague and a little bit of the things you can look for when you are shopping for items like this. I'm glad you got a bargain. You might have gotten a bargain, but a couple of things I want you to look for. If you see a C in a circle, a copyright, you probably have a print, okay? Because that image is being copyrighted, all right? Now, uh, Montague is a well-known southwestern artist, lives in the, in the southwestern United States, a Native American style artist, is most of his topic, subject matter is usually that. And Jimmy Gray Hill here is this little impish boy from the 1950s, 1960s. It's a print. Now, and you're saying, Dr. Lloyd, why do you keep saying it's a print? It's a print, it's a print. It's a print because I went online and I found this exact same print and it was actually identified as a charcoal and pastel because somebody online who wants to be an expert or thinks they're an expert is posting incorrect information. 
saying that it's a charcoal and pastel. It's not a charcoal and pastel. It's not an original work of art. It's a print. It was the exact same size as your print, the exact same subject as your print, Jimmy Gray Hill, and it was also the copyright there with the Montague on the bottom. So that's what you have to think about. You have to know what you're looking at and know what you're buying. That's why I'm helping you to learn how to learn what to look for with these videos, you know, on YouTube. So a couple of other things. When you turned over that piece, there's all water damage at the bottom. So when you open that up, yes, it looks like it is professionally framed. But when you open that up, you might find water damage. You might find mold. You might find some kind of mildew. So you may have to actually take off that dust, that dust screen in the back, the paper, and take off the piece of cardboard that inevitably is in there, the backboard, throw all of that away to get to the print. Hopefully the water hasn't seeped to the print itself. So you can see the water damage at the back. You can actually see the water mark. Um, so there's a couple of things with that. Now, the, the good news is the piece is relatively popular as again, it's mid-century, 1950s, 1960s by a relatively well-known artist and printmaker. And value on this piece is about $150. So. Good job. Thanks for sending in your video and make sure you don't believe everything you read online. You want to know the truth, the real value, the proper identification? Right here. Ask me. Thanks. Hey, Dr. Lori, this is Judy Watson, Virginia Beach. What I have is a 1957 Kenmore automatic dry iron. It is in mint condition and it comes with the original box. Also, it has all of the original documentation that was included and the price tag, if that can be shown as well, and other documentation. And again, it's in mint condition. Hi, Judy. Thanks for sending me your video and thanks for telling me where you're from and showing me you in your video. So thanks for that too. You know, I don't like to iron. If you notice, I rarely wear blouses. I wear a lot of sweaters. And that iron, I kind of recognize because my mother had irons and she would keep the old irons for years and years and years and years. So that iron that you have is a 1957 Kenmore iron. You ex explained about the box, which is good to impact value. And you had some brochures and you even had some advertising materials as well as the price tag of $9.98 for that particular iron. Now, the advertising materials and the brochures will increase value about as much as the box. So keeping all the stuff together is very important, whether you're talking about irons or board games or whatever. So keep that stuff together. It's good that you have it. Mint condition means it's perfect. Never been touched, not even out of the box. Mint condition. So yours is in pristine condition or excellent condition. Very, very good either way. So a couple of things about me, I don't like to iron, right? And a couple of things about your iron is where do you sell these types of things? Your iron's worth about $40. Okay, so how do you get $40 out of that old iron? First of all, prop shops. Those particular places that are looking for a prop, right? For movies, for videos, for anything, media, are looking for these kinds of props. So people go, where do I sell that, Dr. Lori? No one wants an old iron. Has to be in working condition, so you want to think about that. There are also interior decorators who want these types of pieces and staging people who want these types of pieces because people want to show you that, wow, this particular house on the real estate market has a great place for you to actually display your collections, for example. Don't forget about that. Also, when you're evaluating pieces, I wish you had shown me the plug, the plug in the wire impact value. I'm sure it's in good shape. If it isn't, we're going to devalue it a little bit. But a nice piece, a piece really from mid-century modern for the kitchen. Nice to see you too. Thank you very much, Judy from Virginia Beach. I want to say thank you very much. Thanks for sending in those videos. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Ring the bell. And I'm going to send you a lot more information that you can use.